All right, guys, in this video, let's learn yet another feature in React, which is error boundaries. If you can recollect from the lifecycle hooks, I briefly mentioned about the error handling phase, which includes two lifecycle methods. Static, get derived state from error, and component did catch. We will learn more about these two methods in this video. In all the videos we have seen so far, we see that runtime errors during rendering could put our application in a broken state. React basically unmounts the whole React component tree. What would be great is if we could catch the errors anywhere in the component tree and display a fallback UI. This is where error boundaries take the spotlight. Now what exactly is an error boundary? It's simple really. A class component that implements either one or both of the lifecycle methods get derived state from error or component did catch becomes an error boundary. The static method get derived state from error is used to render a fallback UI after an error is thrown and the component did catch method is used to log the error information. Let's understand this better with an example. I'm going to go back to VS Code and within the components folder, create a new file, hero.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the React snippet RFCE to create a functional component. This component will accept hero name as a prop and will render the same. For our understanding of error boundaries though, we need to throw an error. So what I will add is if the hero name is joker, throw an error that says not a hero. Now back in app component, I will include two heroes. The first one, hero name is equal to Batman. And the second one, hero name is equal to Superman. If you take a look at the browser, you can see both the heroes, Batman and Superman. Now I am going to add another hero, but this time pass Joker as the hero name. If you now take a look at the browser, you can see that our entire application crashes. This obviously is not good. What we want is if a particular component throws an error, only that component should fall back into a UI and the remaining components should be unaffected. Let's see how to achieve that with an error boundary. I'm going to go back to VS Code and create a new file called errorboundary.js. Within the file, I'm going to create a new class component using the React snippet RCE and I will get rid of the named export. For this class component to become an error boundary, we need to define either the get derived state from error or component did catch lifecycle methods. Let's start with the first one. Static get derived state from error and it receives the error as a parameter. Within the body, we are simply going to return the new state object. What we will do is set a property called has error to true. Of course, we don't have state right now, so let's add it. Use the snippet rconst, initialize a state property called has error to false. So what we are effectively doing is, if at all there is an error when rendering any of the components, we are setting the state has error property to true. This state property can now be used to create a fallback UI. So in the render method, if this dot state dot has error, then we return an h1 tag that says something went wrong. If there is no error, we return this dot props dot children. This dot props dot children refers to the component we are actually rendering. This will make more sense in just a minute. But let me tell you that our error boundary is now complete. 
The final step is to wrap the components with this error boundary. So in app component, wrap all the hero components with the error boundary component. And make sure to import the component at the top. Now, if I save all the files and take a look at the browser, we still see the error. This might be confusing, but let me tell you, this is the intended behavior. The React team have mentioned that error boundaries are primarily useful for production, but in development, they want to make errors as highly visible as possible. So you will always see this error during development. But what you can do is on the top right, click on the close button and we now have our application back. And you can see that we have the text, something went wrong being displayed. If I go back to VS Code and quickly comment out the error boundary, head back to the browser, click on the close button, you can see that nothing is displayed. So this is the difference. Error boundaries will catch the error and display a fallback UI, which in our case is the text, something went wrong. Now a very important point to discuss about error boundaries is where to place them. Right now our error boundary encloses all the hero components. So if there is an error, everything inside the error boundary is hidden and the fallback UI is rendered. This however might not be ideal. For example, consider an e-commerce site where we display a thousand products. Just because there is an error in one of the products, it would not be a great idea to hide the other 999 products. Similarly, in our example, it's not a good idea to hide the other two heroes when the third hero is throwing an error. So in app component, what I will do is wrap each hero component with the error boundary. Ideally, you would want this as a reusable component, but this will do for now. If I go back to the browser, you can see that we still have the error overlay. I close it and you can now see that the first two heroes are displayed and only the third hero, we have the fallback UI. Batman, Superman and something went wrong. The placement of the error boundary is completely up to you. You can just wrap the top level component or wrap any nested individual components so that only that component has a fallback UI, leaving the rest of your user interface working as expected. Now then, I did mention two lifecycle methods, so let's get to the second one. Component did catch. So right after get derived state from error, we have component did catch, which takes two parameters error and info, which is the information related to the error. And this method is pretty much used to log the errors. So if you have a logging service, you can call it passing in the error and the info parameters. For now, I will simply log them to the console. This will seem redundant though, as you will see in just a second. I'm going to save the file and head to the browser. And when I open the developer tools and take a look at the console, you can see that we have our console logs. We have the error object and the information related to that error. But as it turns out, during development, React automatically logs every error to the console. So the same is already logged as you can see here. But this is what the error and info object will contain in component did catch. Now the final point is that you should know error boundaries catch errors during rendering, in lifecycle methods and in the constructors of the whole tree below them. However, they do not catch errors inside event handlers. If you have an onclick handler and want to catch an error, you just need to use the regular try catch statements and not error boundaries. All right, that is pretty much about error boundaries. Let me quickly summarize it for you. 
Error boundaries are React components that catch JavaScript error in their child component tree, log those errors, and display a fallback UI. A class component becomes an error boundary by defining either or both of get derived state from error and component did catch lifecycle methods. In our example, in the lifecycle method, we set the has error state to true, which causes the fallback UI to be rendered. The placement of the error boundary also matters as it controls if the entire application should have the fallback UI or just the component causing the problem. Error boundaries basically provide a way to gracefully handle error in application code. All right, I hope you now have a decent understanding of error boundaries. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.